Now, John Duggan has joined us to help us preview what's going to happen at Pebble Beach. How are you? Chair and Owen, good morning. Great. What's going to happen at Pebble Beach? We're going to have a brilliant golf tournament that's going to be really exciting for viewers in Ireland on TV sets. Go on, what else? <laughs> <laughs> Why would it be particularly exciting for Irish golfers, Irish golf fans? Yeah, well, I think we've got three lads in the mix. Uh, the, you know, Rory, Shane and Graham McDowell are all playing well. We've got Tiger Woods. GMAC hasn't played well in like about four years and then he puts a good week together the week before the Open goes back to Pebble Beach just to qualify for the Open on his home course. It's all a bit mad, but it's how golf works in that yeah. he just shoots into contention, he shoots level par four days and wins and everybody's like, that came from nowhere! It's happened before. Horses for courses has happened before the players have won. Um, Andy North won US Opens seven years apart and only won one other tournament. So he'll have a huge degree of freedom, Gray McDowell. He's got nothing, nothing yeah. to, like, he'll just play a complete freedom. And even if he's in contention, he knows uh, what to do. Also, he played very well at the Olympic Club up the road in California in 2012. Very similar course to Pebble. Right. So is, are you, is he an no, outsider? No, no, no. You, 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 what is he? What, what odds are G uh, GMAC. Um, it's funny, you, you, you go through the racing post here. Uh, Gray McDowell is 100 to 1. Uh, so they've got, uh, like, you know, this really is, it is the Bible, as I would call it, the Bible, <laughs> the Bible. Uh, <laughs> Steve Palmer, the Racing Post, with his, and Jeremy Chapman with their amazing previews today, and all the odds, and, like, all the tea times, it really is. Even just, like, opening the newsprint this morning, it's just, uh, the profiles of that person, what, do they agree with what I'm saying? Yeah, okay. Mm. So, when you're looking at um, an open... Is it different from other tournaments where you know form into the, the tournament is more important than form around the track? I'm talking about the US Open here because it's, it's such a weird, peculiar event and has been down over the years in terms of outsiders. And, um, and then occasionally you get the best golfer in the field winning by eight or nine strokes. Yeah, or Tiger 15. Um, I think that the problem with the US Open, Jar and Owen, in sizing it up is that they've been tricking up the course in recent years. Uh, Chambers Bay, they, it was a mess. The, the, the putting greens were awful. Shinnecock Hills got out of control with the wind last year. Um, but also in the past, you've also had very, very brutal uh, courses like uh, Winged Foot and Oakland Hills, where it's just completely, if you, if you don't drive the ball straight, you're in like um, Vietnam jungle uh, and trying to get the ball out. So um, you've had some strange winners that have not been able to, like the, most of the players, the top players in the world are probably better with their second shots, their approaches, their iron play. Like who are the best players in the world? Tiger Woods or Ernie Els, generally a better iron players. So the brutality of um, the rough, you get a good bounce or a bad bounce into the rough, you might get a good lie or you might get a bad lie. And then you, th that creates a, a mental challenge for players. And then you have like, the winners like Steve Jones, Michael Campbell, strange kind of winners. So uh, I think even going into this week, uh, the rough apparently at Pebble Beach is very, very um, heavy. Uh, they haven't tricked up the greens. The greens are perfect. The wind is a huge defense of the course, um, but it's not going to be that breezy, apparently, for the first two days. The last two days, it will be breezy. So, um, but, but also, you, you, you do get quality uh, marquee winners like Jack, uh, Tom Watson, have both won at Pebble Beach. Tiger won there. Graham McDowell, you can't say he was a no-hoper uh, when he won. And Dustin Johnson on the final day with three shots clear at the yeah. time. So. Um, the, I just think with the Masters, we generally know that you need a lot of experience to win at Augusta and the field is limited. With the British Open or the Open Championship, generally it favours players that uh, play well on links courses and you, get, you generally get trends regarding that. The US Open can be a bit more random, a bit more random. We did say after um, the most recent major that Brooks Koepka was essentially going to be favoured for every major for the next 18 months. He's not even favoured for the next major. Mm. He's, uh, That's because, as we uh, established yesterday, it's not a course for a beefcake like Brooks. And hitting the, that, like, that, that's the issue I have with uh, the, some of the discourse around Pebble Beach. It's like, you know, long hitters aren't exactly favoured by this. But you can favour yourself sometimes by being a long hitter. It do, just because you're a long hitter, you're not going to be at a disadvantage going into Pebble Beach. No, what it does is it brings the other players that are not bombers into the equation. But I think it's too simplistic to just say Brooks Kepka is, and I know you're not saying that, but just to suggest that he's a long hitter and that's it. I mean, when you talk about ridiculous rough that's tough to negotiate, I mean, we saw the same thing at Beth Page Black. Like, th this is a similarity we share in the last two majors. I think, once again, we're writing off Brooks Kepka, not writing him off. But he won at Shinnecock Hills. Shinnecock Hills is a windy course, uh, and he won there last year. So uh, he's had a hell of a chance this weekend. I, I think the reason why you'd be writing him off is mentally. Mentally, he began to fade in the final line of the back page, uh, Beth Page Black, where his um, 
you could just feel that it was beginning to toll. And I'd wonder, just from a freshness point of view, is the only reason I'd be saying that Brooks Cap can't, can't can win this week. So, uh, Dustin Johnson is favourite, best price about nines, but generally about eight. Roy McElroy is as short as eight in places, best price nine. Brooks kept it generally eight nines, but there is some ten to one available about him. Tiger Woods, biggest price, thirteen to one. And then after that, you get into Patrick Cantley, Jordan Spieth, Justin Rose, Sander Schofley, Ricky Fowler, John Ram, and they're all big prices. So they no, are. No well, one knows what's going to happen here. Will I give my tips? Yeah, um, let's go for it. Okay, so I don't know if you've got the image on the screen, the first image, um, what I'm doing here. Okay, so well, that's the, that's the secondary image, actually. Um, so these are the outsiders that I've picked. There we go. Here we go. Okay, so you're Jordan's well into Ricky Fowler. You love yourself a bit of Ricky Fowler in, yeah, in the in the majors. I do, yeah, but he's not my headline tip. My headline tip is Jordan Spieth. Right, for, I'm spending fifty euro here. You can do a virtual fifty euro, or you can like minus your, uh, you can reduce your stakes by ten percent and do five euro. So Jordan Spieth, right, has got the X factor in golf. He's got a great record. Uh, at the AT&T Pebble Beach Pro-Am where he won in 2017. I was researching this last night. Players have got a good record around Pebble Beach, even if it's softer in February. Third at the PGA, eighth at the Colonial, seventh at the Memorial in recent times. Um, grittier competitor than anybody. Saw that at Birkdale with my own eyes. Coming back into form, Jordan Spieth always finds a way. And I think at 22 to 1, I think his value uh, with the bookmaker I chose, uh, which is going a fifth of the odds, the first eight places. Ricky Fowler for seven each way. Uh, from this 50 euro 28 to 1 um, said he found something at the memorial tournament with a swing that will help him this week at pebble beach a good win player from the west coast of california uh, has won in phoenix this year eight major top fives of course he's a bridesmaid but that's factored into a 28 to 1 price i think we're looking in golf sometimes for players that may peak next whereas at the moment Everybody's saying, well, Patrick Cantlay can win this week. But Patrick Cantlay, the value is gone. The time to get Patrick Cantlay was before the Memorial Tournament. Okay, so what is Cantlay? So I'm just looking for prices on him. Cantlay is about 18 to 1. Like Cantlay, for most majors this year, before he's 50s. What you want to be doing with Patrick Cantlay is, and I, I do really rate what he does, you back on Patrick Cantlay for the US Open in January, mm. not, not this week. Now you're looking for the players like Spieth and Fowler, who, are, who would have been generally 16 to 1 for this type of tournament, and they're going out in price now because of the merit of about other players. Okay. Uh, so that, they're your headline bets. It's, yeah. Um, Four golfers. There, that's two of them. Yeah. Okay. Who's next? The other two, uh, we got on the screen there. Brand Schnedeker. The man, who cry, the man who cries after he doesn't win a major, 50 to 1 for the Tennessee native. Brand Schnedeker won the AT&T twice at Pebble Beach. One of the best putters in the world. Love these Poa Anu Greens. Top 10s uh, in the US Open in 2010 was last held here at Pebble Beach. Um, five top 10s in the US Open and he was 60 in Canada last week so he's coming into form. Great putter, Brand Schnedeker, and I think he could contend. And lastly, you got to have a bit of patriotism about it. Um, although you've got to take patriotism and emotion out of betting, but I do actually believe that Shane Larry does have a chance this week uh, for four-year each way, 66-1 to one, um, for a top eight finish. Should have won at Oakmont, the toughest course in the US Open Road to 2016. Eight at the PGA, likes Lynx Golf, which is Lynxy at Pebble Beach. A lot of experience with the course. He's played there a lot of times on the PJ Tour. Second in Canada last week. Played well at Hilton Head, which also has small greens, like Pebble Beach, after the Masters, which is a bit of a flop. And he was saying in the interviews this week that he decided, you know what, when I was missing the cut of the Masters, I started to play with Freedom. We're talking about GMAC there. And it seems to have worked for him. Of course, he won in Abu Dhabi earlier this year. He's going to get his tour card for next season. I think it's a huge thing for Shane Lowry. I think he could go close this week. Okay, so uh, Lowry at 66, a small bet. A small bet on Brant Snedeker and then slightly chunkier bets on uh, two on Ricky Fowler and also on Jordan, Jordan Spieth. Spieth. Yourselves? Spieth. That was pretty... Why? Convincing. Brooks Not is your boy. Yeah. Brooks is my boy. Brooks is the man. Brooks is uh, the goat, except for a tiger. But uh, Brooks is the greatest amongst men, but sometimes you have to feel the fallibility that even the greatest can feel. And uh, Brooks Kepkin may well feel that this week. I do think he has a hell of a chance, but from what I've read this week, it seems it's going to be speed week. It seems that the course is made for Jordan Speed. It seems it's made for somebody who can navigate their way around in a manner that isn't showing off their muscles and just booming the ball down the middle of the fairway, which uh, my buddy Brooks does so well. Jordan Speed to win. Jerry, you... I don't know. I mean, so uh, why did Justin Johnson not win when G Mac won? 
he lost it. He lost his mind. He shot an 85 in the final day, and he lost his like he was he was getting into the rough early, and then he was taking to uh, too too quick a time to get to. He didn't compose himself effectively. Right now, he's won around the track since. But I was very disappointed by him. He put the he put the uh, foot on Kepka's throat metaphorically in the back nine of the PGA, and then he made two bad errors. He made an error from the fairway. Uh, on the closing stretch there. He really had a chance to put the pressure on Kepka, and he faltered, and he did three-putt at Chambers Bay. Dustin Johnson should have won five majors by now. I just worry a little bit about his mental capacity at the end of major championships. Also, he didn't play very well last week. Is there anybody we don't have doubts about when it comes to their mentality in... Tiger Woods. <laughs> Tiger Woods, Kepka, obviously. But like, there's so many questions about Dustin Johnson, obviously, so many questions about... Rory also, Blackford. also when he's back, when he's in form, or when he's not in the doldrums, speech. Spieth, Spieth to me has proven it, um, and he did that at Birkdale when he was collapsing because he was collapsing after the Masters collapse, and then he came mm. back and beat Matt Kuchar. Matt Kuchar is somebody who definitely doesn't have it, and he doesn't deserve to either, given his recent behaviour. Um, but the two great storylines here, of course, Tiger Woods uh, didn't seem physically fit at the PGA coming off the Masters, and has tuned up, had a very good uh, performance at the Memorial, seven under par through 12 in, in one of his rounds. Um, is the best iron player of all time. Won by 15 shots, as we talked about in 2000. But also in 2010, when he was going through all that hassle um, around scandal and all that, he was, he was close contending to win. So Tiger Woods actually is not bad value, really, when you think about it. And Phil Mickelson turns 49 on Sunday and uh, has, has never won the US Open. He's been six times second, and he's won all the other majors, so that would be a great storyline if Phil won. Um, so Phil's eligible for the seniors tour this yeah, time next year? Yeah, 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 which is quite amazing. Um, but like, I, I think we've got a very deep field down in golf. We've got John Ram, we got like Justin Thomas is a great golfer, but just a bit rusty because he come back off a wrist injury. Xander Schauffele has come out of nowhere. Adam Scott has resurgent. Jason Day, I think, has got Steve Williams on the bag now. Right. Uh, Jason Day, who's got a good record. Like, like it's a Tommy Fleetwood for the English story. Uh, Molinari, we've almost forgotten about. Justin Rose, they're, they're like, they're like we're, we're, we're talking about a quality field. We're talking about quality players. That's why it's probably less likely than we have our, our, our mad winners than we would have had in the past at the US Open. Yeah, you shouldn't really. So, um, so somebody's like running to the bookies right now with tenure in their hand and they were about, to, they have the slip written, Rory McIlroy to win the US Open. Are you telling them to put that tenure back in their wallet? No, I'm, no, I'm not. Um, I also, but I, I, I kind of think to myself, well, it doesn't really suit Rory as the course. Every course should suit Rory if Rory is going to be one of the best players of his generation. It shouldn't be just all about um, hitting a really high on soft courses. Um, he did win a Hoy Lake. He did win a, a British Open there. So I think with Rory recently, as we spoke yesterday, it's mainly been about more his mental preparation hasn't been yeah. in, that in sync. He hasn't been necessarily tuned up and free. Freedom, I think, is the big uh, thrust of what I'm saying here. But he's so streaky. He's in a streak, as he was on Sunday. Like, these streaks tend to continue. They do, and with the, Rory, they tend to continue. It'd be shocking if McElroy didn't play well this week. I would be absolutely stunned if he doesn't play well. Yeah, so I wouldn't put anybody off having a bet on Rory. And um, T to green, like, it's not all links. Half of the track is parkland. Um, with Rory, though, I think a fast arse is important. But he did win at Keogh Island, which is linksy. And that's the PGA, he won that by eight shots. So I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't well, play well this weekend. Would you not? No, it's Rory McIlroy. He just he, he just, just sometimes randomly throws up a great performance. Sometimes randomly throws up a terrible performance. Ah, uh, there's always like a it. It's never one week on its own. The good performances are never an island of a week. It's always like a sustained three four week burst. But it's been a sustained season. Ten top tens. Won the Players Championship and won in Canada. Disappointed at the Memorial and the Masters, but apart from that, he'd been very very solid, Rory McIlroy this year. What about the USPGA? But he's still finished in the top ten, mm -hmm. just didn't start well. If Rory McIlroy starts well... Like the, I wonder if, that's, if that top ten finish, maybe I'm being extremely harsh here, but did that top ten finish kind of come as a result of Rory kind of falling into the top ten when, all right, my yeah, well, sometimes, game's up, I'm not going to win this, uh, play my own game, pressure's off. Probably too rusty, didn't play the week before, <laughs> should have played the week before. I would agree with Jared that he does go through streaks of brilliance, and maybe he's on that streak, but does the course... Like if it was just a longer, more traditional U.S. Open course, actually, um, where it was actually fairways and greens, where it wasn't um, tight, which Pebble Beach is a little bit tight, small greens, um, scrambling, wind. If it was winged foot, if it was, uh, as I said, Oakmont or one of these traditional courses, 
then Rory would be a better favourite. He'd be a 5-1 to one shot. That's why he's an 8 or a 9-1 to one shot, in my view. Also, it's a really, really talented field. He's top of the money list. 6.7 million this year already in prize money. Um, Paul Casey, number 7 in the world at the moment. He's Sorry, got a, number 7 on the PGA Tour money <coughs> list. 3.5 million dollars. Great record at Pebble Beach, Paul Casey. It's June. Like, he's already made 3.5 million dollars and it's only June. We're the wrong job. That's not bad. Uh, we played in the Pro-Am with Paul Casey in um, Carton House. How much did he get for that? Was that the year he won it? it? Yeah, yeah. He was 66 to 1, I think, because his form was terrible. Uh, I only backed him after the end of the first round as opposed to backing him that day, but we got him at about like 20-something. Not What's bad. Nice to play around the golf with? It was really good crack, actually. Yeah? Yeah. In what way, sort of? Uh, nice, because uh, there, there were... Um, he had a reputation for being a little bit kind of taciturn, and then it turned out he was the complete opposite of that. He was actually a really good guy. How do you play when you're in the company of Paul Casey? I played quite well, actually. Did you, yeah? Yeah. You, so you thrive under the pressure. You're not like Rory. You wouldn't fade away and then roar back to contend for a top ten. You'd kind of lead from the front if you had his set of talents. That's it. Lead from the front, yeah. We're going to do an article off the ball.com. We'll go through the kind of rationale for all these tips and, and maybe a couple of other nuggets that I've seen. Uh, so do check that out uh, today and tomorrow off the ball.com. It's a later start because it's California, so a later start will be tomorrow afternoon when they start the US Open at Pebble Beach. Paul Casey's 55s. Is that worth it in each way? So, like you, you, you can really get into um, quicksand on these kind of golf tournaments. I, I generally would I did, uh, I did the last couple of quick, uh, quick tournaments, so. Uh, like I'd be pick one or two, go with it. Like I, I, I would generally limit it to four for um, or you, that. You could do trades for first round leader, this kind of thing. Like Kevin Streelman, I was desperate to see if he was in this because he's got such a good record around Pebble Beach, but he's not in the tournament. Um, like players like Brian Stewart, a really good iron player that I kind of I would notice, and then you kind of then you get like really in depth into the study of him, and then you get sucked into it, and then you end up losing twenty quid in it. Um, that's the kind of the danger of these kind of things. So that's why I generally decide, okay, I'm going to limit it to four and keep it at that. Uh, and sometimes limit it to one if I've got a very strong view. But it's hard to have a strong view in the US Open. All right, John, good stuff. All right, guys. Thanks very much for that. We're uh, getting into the power rankings up next. Uh, before that, though, <coughs> this is something that uh, we're very much looking forward to. It's the trip of a lifetime. It's the very first ever Off the Ball Open. We're headed to Abu Dhabi for some winter sun in November. Uh, it's from the 17th to the 23rd. You've got to pay your deposit in the next couple of weeks. Um, it's going to be uh, a Peter Laurie golf clinic, five nights in a four-star hotel, a gala dinner, and of course, a world-famous OTB roadshow. It's taking place this November the 17th to the 23rd in Abu Dhabi, and you can sign up now and uh, go and pay your deposit off the com <coughs> forward slash open. Special guests, Kevin Caban, Kieran Donahue, Peter Laurie, and more. And you get to play two of the best golf courses in the planet. That's Yaz Links and The National. It's the very first ever Off The Ball Open this November. Get on to offtheball.com forward slash open. Paul McGinley was on Off The Ball last night. Here he is uh, saying that he thinks there's reason to be hopeful about Roy McIlroy this week. I've seen it all year, Joe, to be honest. And, and what, having followed him and watched him closely, I see a huge improvement in his performance level this year. Not just in terms of his results, but in his performance throughout the bag. And his wedge play has got a lot of a lot of um, criticism over the years and me included last year you know he his distance control was nowhere near where it needed to be since this introduction of, of Brad Faxon I'll go back to it again I've been harboring on about it now for, for quite a while he, he's, he's got a different approach to the game he's looked at what's important in terms of scoring his putting has gone to another level he put it unbelievably last week the bit that I saw and it also statistics wise you can see that his wedge play his chipping I mean these things have all really gone to another level it's not often now that you see him really hit a bad wedge shot in fact he hits a number of really good wedge shots and I don't know if you watched the golf last week but yeah. the way he dismantled that first hole to get off to a fast start particularly at the weekend and he had tricky pitch shots in on both occasions and he damn near held both of them mm. you know and these were from 60 70 yards over bunker not a lot of green to work with you know that's a lot of confidence it's a lot of skill and it's also a lot of practice to 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 be able to execute those something he hasn't done in the past so yes he's always been a long straight driver and that's always been an element to him but the, the real reason why he's gone to another level in the last few months and why he dominated is the difference in the short